Hi Port Townsend, see you in a few days. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. We got to take La Vie and Rose, which I am manager of for the Maritime Center, out for a three day cruise to the San Juans. We went from Port Townsend across the Strait of Juan de Fuca to Blind Bay, which is on Shaw Island in the middle of the San Juans. We met up with some friends for a raft up, including a friend who has a race boat turned into a cruising home. And don't worry, we got back to boat work this week too. Stay tuned to the end for an exciting project back in the Duracell shed. Ahoy! Ahoy! <laughs> Welcome to the Blind Bay Flotilla. So this is our raft up for the weekend. So we are in on Shaw Island in the San Juan Islands and we met up with an old friend of mine, Tom, who I used to work with at the Seattle Sailing Club. Mm -hmm. That's how I know him. And we shared a shop together. That's right, and we shared a shop together in Ballard when I first opened my my little business. Yeah. So Tom has a really interesting boat to us because this is a big racing boat that he has turned into his cruising home. And so we're here to talk more to Tom about his experience. What is the make, the model? When was this boat built? How long is it? Well, it's a, a custom Alan Andrews design. It was built in 1990 in Wester, at Westerly Marine down in Southern California. The uh, Santa Cruz 50 had come out a few years earlier. The gentleman who was a composer for Hollywood music was an avid racer in uh, Monterey and, and he basically said, I want a boat that'll beat them and I can win Transpac. And did end up uh, winning Transpac. Eight days to Hawaii. Wow. And, and so it's been a, a hollowed out race boat its whole life. There's lots of room down below to drag big sails in and out, mm -hmm. uh, but that just makes it nice for moving around living aboard for us. And so then, this is yeah, kind of the kind quintessential of... ultralight displacement boat style yeah. race boat. Right. 53 feet keel, is 9 feet displacement is 22,000 pounds. Right on. Very cool. Well, balsa, one inch balsa core. Oh, okay. The whole boat's balsa. And, yeah. And... Uh... Hull and deck. Okay. So would you tell us first what your favorite part about having a cruising boat that used to be a racing boat? My favorite part is just the wide open, clean spaces on deck and uh, down below. It's such a pleasure to be able to walk up and down the boat and not be tripping over stuff or squeezing my way around. Mm -hmm. So I just love the, uh, the cleanliness and the openness. Why did you decide to go with a racing boat in the first place? to make your cruising home out of? Uh, well, in the, in the 70s, I started out uh, uh, first with a Hobie 16 and then a uh, sailing heavier displacement cruising boats, the uh, West Sail 32 and 43 and 42, and did thousands of miles on those. And then over the years, driving other people's boats and doing a lot of racing, racing everything in Puget Sound and a number of races uh, uh, elsewhere in the world. and started to evolve when cruising with the family on customers or friends boats. I'd always be imagining what would be my perfect boat and how would I design it and it sort of evolved into finding a high performance race boat and converting it to a cruise boat. That just seemed like the best way to have a, a boat that was a pure joy to sail, be able to get places across oceans uh, quickly, uh, theoretically run from bad weather. Uh, Artemis sails at 10 knots downwind pretty easily, nine knots upwind, motors at a good fuel mileage at eight. We could really get around and mm -hmm. it's kind of nice. Right on. Okay, so two things we have to ask Tom specifically here in the cockpit is about the big wheel, how he enjoys the big wheel, and your open transom. So first, let's start with the big wheel. What do you think about it? Big wheel is great because lock to lock, it's one turn. And then, and sitting here, and driving, I can see the telltales, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really comfortable. Uh, Carol, she likes to sit back here, drive with her foot, <laughs> nice. and while I bring her, you know, lunch, and uh, or tea, 
<laughs> she likes to have her tea while she's driving. Yeah, exactly. So. And the open transom, we we store all our fenders back here, so it's not all that open. It's not any kind of a worry. To, yeah, you uh, feel plenty safe. Yeah, I've got plans to have a little swim step back there. Mm -hmm. But for using our uh, dinghy that Carol built, the Port Townsend Maritime Center, boarding on and off amidships of is is the way better than trying to do it back here. First thing you'll notice is how big and open this floor plan is down here. Did you? guys change much when you moved on board as far as the layout of it or anything like that? Uh, no, this is uh, just how the interior was. The spare spinnaker pole stretched from this bracket all the way back. Oh, wow. But I took that out. We added a V-berth up forward. And so there wasn't a bed forward? There was no... No, that was a sail locker. That's the only real modification we made. We plan on uh, putting in sort of a traditional settees here with uh, storage behind the backrests and, oh, okay. and pipe berths or bo some bookshelves above. Other than that, it's just as it's always been. Yeah. And yeah, this big table is so great for uh, baking and doing projects, mm -hmm. yeah, repairing stuff, building stuff, baking stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so this is uh, really interesting because this is something that we plan on doing on Duracell is putting an island in the middle of the boat. This being a race boat, how, do you have kind of full confidence? Do you feel really safe aboard this oh, boat? Oh yeah, gosh. That, you know, that's one thing I really love about this boat is the confidence that it inspires. It's so highly engineered and hand-built and designed for crazy guys to go offshore and throw it off of waves and, you know, put up the sails and let God take them down. I just feel so confident about her strength. The next question <laughs> is, what's your plans with the boat? To just go explore the world and find fun places to surf off the beaten track. Drop the hook, jump off, and go surfing. Right on. Well, thank you very much for showing us Artemis, Tom. Yeah, you bet. Glad to have you. I challenge you to a race. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, oh, yeah. really? In the future, Duracell <laughs> yeah. versus Artemis. All right. Double-handed. Double-handed, <laughs> there you go. So we have one more question for Tom. What does FFB stand for? As a story I, uh, that I heard was that that came out of the factory that way. The factory guys put it on uh -huh. and it's been there ever since. And it stands for fast fucking boat. <laughs> yeah, you want to take the stern or bow line? Sure. The next morning our raft up dispersed and we continued our mini cruise through the islands, stopping at a couple of peaceful anchorages for our last two nights. What a peaceful and gorgeous anchorage. We are going to hike up Mount Finlayson, which is that way. I'm just trying to imagine what it would be like to see Duracell out there at the anchor. It feels so far off or so like, it's like a whole different phase of the Duracell adventure. Mm -hmm. back to Port Townsend by sunset. Today we're cutting stuff up inside the boat. This is the 
kind of the last remaining part inside the boat that I haven't cut out yet and I'm feeling compelled to get this cut out today. So this is the part of the boat that when it was raced, this was like the what I call the pod area. So there's the chair here and the nav table was right above here. So I've been using it as kind of a table, but lately it's just been getting in the way. So I'm ready to cut it out. There's some tanks under here that I'm going to cut out. Going to cut out the rest of the galley, some of this, cut out the rest of the plumbing. And then I'm going to start working on cutting out the ballast tanks. So I'm at a point in the project where I'm feeling like I want to see a change, a big change in the boat. And so this is how I'm motivating myself. Say more about that, what you were telling me the other night about that. Sometimes for a while it's like nothing changes in the boat. I'm working, working, working on the boat and nothing really substantial changes. And I, I get antsy and I, I might get a little like bored. And so to motivate myself, I got to find something to do that can make a big change in the boat that gets me like, you know, excited again. Not that I'm not excited about coming to work and working on this boat every day, but sometimes I just need a little extra. This is my hit of, you know, motivation. I figured we could use a sink in our in our head. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a good idea. Full hot tub? Uh-huh. A wading pool. A wading pool in the middle of our boat. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Remind me I gotta weigh all this stuff. Okay. Don't forget to weigh all the stuff. Yeah. My saw's all burned up. They have one. They have one down the street. <laughs> Matt gets another toy. we could reuse this for something. I don't know, maybe <laughs> something in the galley. <laughs> it's going to the dump. up against the lifelines right there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, lean it up and then you just move until it's blinding you yeah, exactly. and then you know it's in the right place. You feel it, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, That's <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah. 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 So, what if, if he's just uh, yeah. like this? We have two new Patreons to thank this week. Both were really interesting emails to get from these folks. First, uh, thank you to Siobhan and her husband, Carl, who they learned to sail together, fell in love sailing. They got engaged on a sailboat. They did their honeymoon on a sailboat. And now they just bought their own 1970 Soling and they've fixed it up themselves and are racing it around in uh, the LA area. So. Thank you very much, much to Siobhan and her husband, Carl. And thank you to Lucho, who is from Peru. He was a professional off-road race car driver and now turned sailor. He and his wife bought a boat in Florida a few years ago. They fixed it up and they sailed it through the Caribbean and into the Pacific uh, back to their home in Peru. So thank you very much to Lucho. Thank you very much to everybody who's been a supporter of our channel. And uh, we'll see you next week.